Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and that was Josh Cook on the piano. I've got a lot to talk about today. i got a very special flagship Friday for you guys today, along with uh, Hallmarker Bullmark. i got Pre-Critic. i got a whole bunch of stuff, including some city council. They talk about affordable housing and some news. So let's kick it into gear as we're talking about flooding in the city of Missoula. It's time for weather. A current temperature is 52 degrees. Your high is going to be 57 with a high on Saturday in the 60 degrees. So we're going to see those temperatures all week long with showers in the 100 percentile of showers. So if it's not raining now, it's going to be raining today. And you got to have severe hazardous, multiple hazardous in effect, according to the National Weather Service, for flood warning. And then flood watch later on this weekend as it starts uh, get a little bit better. But still, you got to watch out for some of those flood waters because it is the season for a little bit of runoff and a whole lot of rain. All right, so let's talk about some news items. Uh, city uh, overalls and how they see affordable housing in the future in the land use and planning meeting along with admin and finance and community the whole. And of course, I'll have that in my city council report a little bit later in the show. Um, in state news, uh, one of the brothers from Texas, the Wilkes brothers, they've been, they have the most privately owned land in the state of Montana. And they, on Tuesday, the Montana Supreme Court court upheld its oldest water right in the Flat Willow Creek dating back to 1882. Abandonment is a tricky and a critical burden is one of the parties is claiming a, um, amendment, said Michelle Bryan, a law professor at the University of Montana specializing in natural resources and environmental issues. Along its uh, winding route, the creek passes through uh, Iverson property as well as Dan and Ferris Wilkes uh, in Bar Ranch before reaching uh, Clay, um, Claymert uh, property. The Inbar uh, Ranch is just one of several ranches that the billionaire brothers from Texas have purchased across the state to become one of the Montana's livest private landowners. It's not easy going upstream to find who owns the water rights. A ruling could also lead water districts, the state, and the water court to require a higher level of record keeping going forward. And of course, essentially, Montana water courts have been established since 1979 to kind of have, have establishment of actually who owns the water rights in that particular area versus, and it's also been like a huge contested issue in terms of stream access. So this is interesting kind of just kind of see, especially with private landowners moving forward on this. Of course, if you haven't heard nationally or seen on Facebook about all your friends and uh, everything, a wave of anti-abortion uh, pa uh, laws passed through many states' levels from Alabama's heart detection to an eight-week cap in some states. On Tuesday, Alabama legislators passed a bill banning abortions with very limited expect uh, except exceptions. And the two exceptions are to avoid a serious health risk to the unborn child's mother, if the unborn child has a lethal anomaly, and if the woman has an ectomic pregnancy. Uh, an uh, amendment to exempt rape and incest vic uh, victims failed to pass, and the law calls for doctors who perform abortions in the state of Alabama, Alabama to be treated as felons to face up to 99 years in prison. Mississippi Governor Bri uh, Phil Bryan uh, signed a heart bill uh, law in March. E exceptions are to prevent a woman's death or her serious risk of impairment. Ohio Governor signed into a heart beat bill in April, a day after the state House and state passed the law. George, Georgia's uh, Senator Brian Kemp signed a bill last week that would uh, ban abortions if a fatal heartbeat if a fetal heartbeat can be detected. The American Civil Liberties Union has said it would challenge this law uh, in court. Kentucky, Arkansas, Utah, and Iowa have passed similar bills. Uh, states to move forward on the anti-abortion bill would, uh, would, are, that are still in process are Missouri, Missouri, Louisiana, South Carolina, West Virginia, Florida, and Texas. 
New York, on the other hand, has passed a bill that would reinforce women's health, and Governor Andrew uh, Camo says, with the signing of this bill, we are uh, sending a clear message that whatever happens in Washington, women in New York will always have fundamental right to control their bodies. Vermont is taking a step further to engrave abortion protections in their constitution by 2022. So those are some of the things that are happening nationally. Um, here are some programs that are going to be airing on MCAT, and then when I come back, I'm going to be talking about pre-critic. And you just get lost And you never get lost You better let love depart I know it's so And yet I know I just can't get you out Of my heart There I am at the Bozeman International Airport. Uh, I think we flew to Calgary back then, that's why we called it International. Uh, on my way from Bozeman, Montana to the USSR. Uh, by the way, bless my mother's heart, she's been supportive of mine ever since. Uh, 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 but back then it was kind of kooky to go to the Soviet Union. Um, and over time, uh, it turned out that I didn't think these people were so different than us. Uh, I met people my age, uh, they liked Led Zeppelin. I liked Led Zeppelin. Uh, basic kind of things that, that college kids are interested, they were. And it, was a, it gradually became an optimistic time that maybe Russians and Americans were moving closer together. I go all over the country um, and I play with folks and it's great, but it's amazing how many people don't have something like this going on. So we're incredibly lucky. Uh, it's been great to have rubies and really hope this keeps rolling into the future. If you don't like the sound of your voice, keep singing, keep recording, and keep tweaking it until you sound like what you want to sound like. Don't just go, oh, e, yuck, it sounds terrible. I can't do it. Yeah, don't. So you kind of have to fight. You have to fight through it. Um, and it's hard because, yeah, I think it is kind of a universal thing. So I call this a global disgrace. Most of these deaths are preventable. So pregnancy-related complications are the leading cause of death for women between the age of 15 and 49 worldwide. And every day, 830 women die from preventable causes related to pregnancy and childbirth. Every year, 2.7 million babies die within one month of being born. So we could talk about infant mortality, but that would be another whole lecture. So we're going to focus on maternal mortality today. 99% of all maternal deaths occur in developing countries, and maternal mortality is higher in rural areas and even in some urban areas where poverty is rampant. And they, what they used to do is, is they'd take pictures and then parachute the film out of some canister down to the ground, and I'll bet that's the only way they could do that 1946 one. Uh, the first digital image <laughs> was 1959, and of course we can't even tell what it is. <laughs> and and of course you recognize this was with uh, early digital camera. And think of that, 1959, and we didn't start getting serious about uh, uh, commercial digital cameras till the 90s. So this is, this was the start. And, uh, and that incidentally is a cloud deck over the, over the Pacific. Uh, um, I found out by reading the caption, not that I could tell.
Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for a little pre-critic where I judge a movie based on absolutely nothing but the title and what I previously know about it. So anyways, from the headshot gun fu action franchise that glorifies killing, it, it really does. Seriously, relax, gun people. Um, but wh why would you get anything new from every assassin movie trying to kill John Wick because he broke the rules? I don't know. It's kind of like one of those movies where you like try to establish a world and then the world becomes bigger and bigger and it's just like, okay, I didn't need to know that much about the Assassin's Guild. But of course, at some point, how far is someone willing to go for a dog? Um, anyways, this movie has action set pieces where John must fight the establishment uh, guild, um, Assassin's Guild, because reasons. And at the end of the day, he probably dies or he th they think he dies and he's always like, gives a nice little wink to the camera and be like, this is my end of my story. Or is it? I don't know. If it makes money, it's going to keep going. Moving on. Speaking of keeping going, um, another sequel, but it's not actually the na same uh, title as the original movie. Uh, this is Immortal Highlander Dog. It's back in this movie about a boy and his dog that moved on to his granddaughter. This tale, uh, get it? Because tale and tale. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> this movie... <laughs> So dumb. What's this stuff, man? Yeah, okay, I'll tell you what this stuff is. Uh, this movie follows a dog as they help the granddaughter grow up with a furry friend who has been around for about 80 years transporting from dog after dog uh, in an attempt to warm your heart. But don't worry, there is uh, no bad CGI mountain lion like in the other dog find its way home movie. Um, so yeah, Josh Gad is the voice of the dog once again. So you get to see that stuff. Didn't they make a that other dog movie like a month ago yeah that was the cgi uh mountain lion dog movie yeah are they just gonna keep making them like back to back well a dog's way home i don't think that was the same deal as the dog's journey uh, dog's journey which is a uh, sequel to a dog's purpose which i haven't seen what? either of them <laughs> say that in, in order again well uh the first movie that came out was a dog's purpose when was that? which uh came out like two or three years ago okay and then the next movie, just this last year, 2018, I think sometime in the late summer, during the, I think the, the lull of the movie season was uh, A Dog's Journey, which is a dog going home, which the dog wasn't immortal and couldn't like bounce around bodies. CGI Mountain Lion? Yep. Okay. If you watch the trailer, it's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. Here's another romantic movie in terms of uh, The Fault in Our Stars, but this one's called The Sun is Also a Star. So I guess this is also a, a romantic, dramedy, blah, blah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's going to be one of those movies where just the like... The sun is also a fault in our stars. Yeah, a sun is also a fault in our paper town stars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. this is a far in our stars tragic of romance, uh, but nobody really dies. It's just like moves away forever kind of situation. So it's about a girl who's cynical about love. And, you know, there's a guy who's just like, I'm going to warm your heart. And she's like, you're not going to warm my heart. And then she's like, oh, my God, you just warmed my heart. But I have to go. See ya. And then he's like, wait, don't go. We can make it work. And I'm just like, well, you know, I, I don't think we really can. He's like, isn't there a long-distance relationship? He's like, I don't know. Who cares? I don't believe in love. It's like, now you don't believe in love? You just fell in love with me. Blah, blah, blah. Movie. Yeah. You know, I, I saw the trailer for that the other night. Because you watched Detective Pikachu? Yeah. Because it came out, literally, the trailer was the movie, the trailer just before Detective Pikachu. Yeah, I could not take it seriously. Uh, not at all. Mainly because they cast, like, two of the most attractive actors in Hollywood. They're pretty attractive. It really takes you out of the story, man. It really does. It's like, oh, yeah, whoa. They, they get paid to fall in love with each other. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. What it, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Seems forced. It really does. And speaking of force, uh, stay tuned for Hallmark or Bullmark later on the show. So that concludes your uh, pre-critic movie movies that are coming out this weekend. You can see them or not, but you can expect those kind of uh, cliches to happen during the movie. I don't know. I slapped my hand, but that's good. <laughs> All right. So this is a uh, interesting uh, piece of movie that I'm going to be showing you guys because this is a um, uh, this was a, a pretty much a uh, a whole session process that we were working on over at one of the schools. It is an after school program. We had, uh, did this, we, we took in a professional approach to making this movie and um, there's not an official name for this movie, but it's Flagship Friday, New Girl. So this is part one of two. Part two will be airing next Friday, which will wrap up the Flagship Friday season for this year. So without further ado, here is the Flagship Friday video of the week. <laughs>
Would you like to go to school? Yeah. Okay. Have you heard? Um, you know Jimmy? He cheated on his girlfriend, Patricia. So, um, this is the school. Uh, these are the lockers that you'll probably be at because they're mostly empty. Oh, and I forgot to tell you that, oh, uh, well, who was it? Oh, yeah. Um, Patricia, the girl, um, who was cheated on by her boyfriend, Jimmy. Uh, she, she actually got a new boyfriend and then cheated on him again. Oh yeah, those are the bathrooms, if you would like to go, and a fountain. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and what's your name? It's Gabby. Yeah. Wait, is it Gabby with a Y, an I-E, or an I? Oh my gosh, it's like fate! You're not, you're not kidding. No. Completely serious. I'm completely You're serious. one of us! This is Andy. She spells her name with an I. This is... This is Millie. And then, somewhere, wherever she went, we've got Lonnie. Also with an I. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. the I Club. It's the I Club. Um, I was kind of in the middle of some with Gabby. Oh, we don't need you anymore. We can take it from here. Bye. See ya. Okay, I'll just go talk to Jim. Yeah, you do that. Yeah. This is Gabby. Yeah. Hi. Hi. And now we have four eyes. Where did you get those glasses? And do you have to say that joke every time? Don't ask questions and yes. Hi, Gabby. Hi. Did you know that her name ends with an I? Oh, really? Mm-hmm. It does. So, like I said, now we have four eyes. I don't care if you have an eye at the end. I'll still be your friend. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I don't... Yeah, but you do have an eye at the end of your name, so... Gabby. Honey. Honey. So, this is where we normally eat our lunch. We don't really like to head in the cafeteria since it's kind of nasty smelling and crowded. So, yeah, okay. Sorry, I forgot about something. So the other day, I was after school just some extra biology, don't worry about it. And there was a basketball game going on and I decided that I was gonna go watch because Miss Berkeley was taking forever yet again. So I sat down in the wrong place and the coach was just like, Millie, you're up! So I went on and then I actually got, like, I actually started playing and then the coach thought I was real. And I like shot at whatever it's called and it was really cool. It's pretty perfect. How are you on the basketball team if you don't even know terms? Um. Do you guys remember I just kind of like walked off of the field because there was a the playground point. like next door? Get to the point. Well, I was just talking. Oh, have you ever played soccer before? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then we had the snacks afterwards, right? Uh-huh. My mom brought in like cheese sticks once and then mine was moldy so I threw it at her head. But you Get know. Get to the point. I'm just talking, you know. Well, there's supposed to be a point to the story. Fine. Do you guys want to talk about something? Oh, Gabby, so you said you made sculptures and stuff. What what did you make sculptures of? Um, I, I actually made a sculpture of uh, my friend. Your friend? What does your friend look like? Um, sort of like you. What was her name? Emily. Emily! Millie. Millie? Uh, we should probably just ease into it, kind of. She's yeah. new, so... Ease into it. Don't talk her ear off. Okay, well, I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. No. Okay. Sorry we didn't get to really talk at lunch. Millie and Andy are kind of talkative. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So, do you miss your old town? Um, no. My other school didn't go so well. We oh. didn't actually move because my mom got another job. Because um, I was bullied a lot, and I'm just hoping the schools can be different. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, do you like soccer? Yeah, 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 it's, it's fun. Yeah. Do you like air conditioning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back where I lived, um, you needed it or you would die. So what's your favorite show? Uh, I like Mafia. Have you ever seen it? I love it. It's oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I've been watching all three seasons. Oh, really? Me too. I am almost done. I have the last episode left. Oh, don't tell me. I, I did. So who do you think it is? I don't know. I don't want to say because I might spoil it. Okay, so we might be getting a Shikoku this weekend, which is a Japanese breed of dog. But we might not because the past few summers we've been trying to get one, but we couldn't drive out to Canada and get one. Just because we've been super duper busy with, like, Hawaii, where we went this past summer, and we made bread, and then we went to dolphin stuff, and we went to the pool. We Where's Lonnie? Oh, they're right there. Oh, well, well, well. Look who finally showed up. Sorry, I was just talking with Gabby. What took you so long? She was annoying me so much. Um. Okay, so Gabby, there's kind of a hangout thing at my house tonight, and I was wondering if you might want to come. Um, uh, I, uh, I got a lot of homework to do, but... Are you sure? It'll be fun. Okay, maybe. maybe. Are we done yet? I'm kind of tired of standing here. Sure. I guess so. We could go. Oh, wait! I forgot. I have a couple questions for you, Abby. Gabby? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, Gabby. So, where'd you live before here? Uh, California. California! Yeah, I used to have a grandparent who lived there. Are your grandparents still alive? No. No, that's depressing. Are your mom and dad divorced? Uh, yeah. How old are you? Twelve. Where did you get those earrings? I love those. Uh, a store? A store? Which one? Um, the one down the Oh, have you been to the new mall yet? No. That's depressing, too. Have you ever been to Disney World? I heard that's in California, too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Disney is. World is pretty cool. What about SeaWorld, uh, the other thing, Legoland? Um, I, I mean, uh, one. Millie, I'm not with the questions. Sure. Okay. I have to go. Um, I have to ask my dad if I can go. So, bye. Well, can I at least take you guys? I... Can we just leave it alone? I... I can't hang out today. Okay. Bye. See you, Lonnie. Guess it's just you and me, Andy. Come on. Because I have nothing better to do. All right. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Let's talk about uh, some um, Hallmark or Bullmark. Wow, that was a horrible introduction. Let's start this again. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, it's time. It's time for yeah, Hallmark. Hallmark. It's yeah. a movie where I read a synopsis from a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And it's up to you guys at home, but mostly Josh. Mostly me. To figure out if it's a real movie or it's complete hogwash, otherwise known as Bullmark. Welcome to Hallmark or Bullmark. Are you ready to play? No. All right. Who cares? <laughs> Claire is a biology teacher who charters a class trip to Blue Island, an island just off the coast that houses an abandoned lighthouse. Things change, however, when the captain of her class's voyage is her ex-boyfriend, and on top of that, wants to develop the island to a commercial entity. With some luck, she might salvage more than just Blue Island. Sailing into love. Hallmark or Bullmark? Hallmark. What? Is that Hallmark? Is that your guess? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It sounds too real to not be. Well, you got you you got the first one right, son. Yes. All right, you ready to play the next round? Once, yeah. Yep. We always do two back to back. When Ted gets engaged to the high school mean girl, and asks Jess, his highest his high, his childhood best friend. To plan their wedding, things get complicated. While planning their wedding, Jess begins to see Ted then more than just a friend. But does he feel the same way? Now Jess must decide if she wants to break through the friend zone to love. And the movie is called From Friends to Fiance. Is this a Hallmark original movie or is this complete bullmark? Mm, I'm going to say... Uh, Bullmark. I think you made that up. Did you make that one up? Nope. It's complete Hallmark original movie. God, that's so terrible. I know. Hallmark movies are terrible, which is why they're so easy to write for. That's 
Yeah, I could have sworn. I see. I, I thought since you like fumbled a couple it, words, maybe you, like misspelled them in the text editor. And well, the, 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 it's sometimes it's even the opposite. Like, I have trouble reading a lot of different things here and there, especially when the pressure's on. And live TV, it's That's like, w- uh, uh, thorough, right? Anyways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, man, yeah. yeah, I mean, you could have written both of those. Yeah, I, mean, I did. I did rewrite a lot of them because the original synopsis for the uh, friend to fiance is just garbage. Just a lot. Like, I wrote the, the tagline, and now Jess misses the side if she wants to break through the friend zone to love. The Blue Island one just seemed too specific <laughs> to not be... I know. Blue Island. What, what kind of name is Blue Island? It's like, how would I come up with an island called Blue? I would have called it like uh, Autumn, Gr- Autumn Grove. Yeah. <laughs> like Orcas Island. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's... Yeah, so two movies on Hallmark Original Channels, and they're uh, getting ready for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, you go, just go to the Hallmark uh, 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 website and you can yeah, see it. Yeah, we'll have some Hallmark uh, summer edition. Now, this is actually their pre-summer lineup. <laughs> then they're gonna have an actual you summer mean, lineup. It's like their constant lineup. Yeah. I should see if I could like get a job with them. They probably need new actors like every day. <laughs> I just imagine that they're like constantly filming, right? Like they don't even sleep; they're just. Uh, I pfft, well, it really depends upon them. production and stuff like that. They usually film it in like the same towns over and over again. Yeah. Like yeah. the and you know it's it's kind of ridiculous. They probably use like the same actors. Yeah, and the same gazebo in every in same every gazebo <laughs> in every wedding scene. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I remember that gazebo from that other movie that had a gazebo. They have like the same parents for different uh brides and grooms. Yeah. Nice. Same party. So we're gonna talk about some city council, but I do want I wanted to throw it to you for some music because we're at the middle of the show. So let's play some music. I'll throw it to an art clip, which will be pretty much the last time we'd be playing this art clip from the Missoula Art Museum. So here's Josh and then after Josh we'll show some art. Thank you. 
<laughs> Thanks, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> so right. we just I just had Josh play throughout the whole entire art clip. I think it would be nice, and that's a nice little uh, send off to uh, that last time you'll be able to see that art installation. You guys can go to the Missoula Art Museum anytime. Free admission, free expression. It's always free. Go on down there. They have classes there, and usually uh, to pay for a lot of their services there, sign up for membership, and you're uh, guaranteed a lot of uh, great things along the way as well. So. Um, they always, you know, membership, you know, it's just an annual fee. So that's pretty much it for that. Let's talk a little bit about city council. There's a lot of city council, like a lot of city council. And they're talking about, yeah, sorry, Josh. No, it's Jeez. Okay. It's important. And it's important because uh, Jimmy Grant, he's a historian with, uh, in adjacent to the Historic Preservation Committee. He gives an update on what HBC is doing to basically educate people in the community about, hey, there's historical landmarks here, but we want to be able to show you and tell you what these landmarks actually mean to the city of Missoula and what they mean. So, you know, like when you see a, an old building in Missoula, it's like, oh, I wonder where that came from or where, where that from. Because there's some buildings that have a plaque, but a plaque can only do so much. So here is Jimmy. Talk a little bit about that. Um, on a basic level, the Heritage Interpretive Plan is going to be an overview document, essentially serving as a roadmap of sorts, to try to connect our existing heritage interpretation as well as identify opportunities for new interpretation. Um, as Emmy mentioned, we have Unseen Missoula Tours, and, and this process was really born out of that. Um, we saw a demand here and an opportunity to identify these resources, and we recognize that we have a lot of interpretation in downtown Missoula already uh, through our various nonprofits and our cultural institutions where we can attempt to connect them, um, allow people to, an avenue of, of network um, to communicate and facilitate new programming. So, All right, so uh, Jimmy wants to uh, have a more formal plan um, in place of the HBC. Um, the plan is heritage in interpreted. Uh, plan is something that HBC is looking into to see what stories each building downtown tells and could tell in the future, improving flow and the sense of place in Missoula, and to spread history notes for anybody interested. So here is another uh, quote from Jimmy as well. Um, preserving the spirit of place, promoting this community identity, and fostering civic pride, um, connecting downtown visitors to the community and heritage of this place, making it accessible so it's not something they need to get on the internet to go search for. Um, we want to increase awareness overall about Missoula's heritage, so it's not unlike the legacy businesses. That that type of um, activity really brings out this awareness of our heritage. All right, so. Uh Another thing that was noted as well is that Heidi West wanted to make sure that um, uh, all heritage of Missoula was also in place, including American Indians. Jimmy said that the heritage of Missoula is more than just the settlers and hopes to flesh out history both good and not so good involving the relocation of American Indians to the uh, Taylor's Kootenai Reservation. Of course, so far this process that will try to teach people visiting Missoula about Missoula while downtown or and not and certain hot spots to kind of show, to cultivate education and also kind of tell people about uh, certain things that have happened throughout the city of Missoula's history, including the uh, Higgins Bridge basically being washed away. That's a big history note as well. Did you know about that, Josh? About uh, uh, the, the Higgins Bridge basically, because uh, the flood waters got so high, it basically <laughs> pushed the bridge off of Higgins? Yeah, yeah, I kind of noticed that a little bit too. I, I saw... Um, the news about that. Um, hopefully, the water doesn't get worse. I guess I don't know. I'm not really in control. Well, that's like that was like kind of like a hundred year flood kind of deal, and not to mention this is about the time when um, um, the Wilma building was right next to the river before they built yeah. up Karis Park. So there's a lot of history of Missoula that most people don't know about, and I think this is a good way to just kind of move forward on this as well. Yeah, I guess I didn't know if Wilma was so close to the river before. Yeah, people literally threw trash out of their windows into the um, Clark Fork River. Well, no, that's just terrible. And there was a split. There was basically an island that would form every summer, and I think the Ringling Brothers Circus came through there and set up their oh, circus right on there. Oh, about that, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Why can't we do that anymore? Because the island's not that big, and it got converted just into... put them in the uh, river. <laughs> <laughs> just... Put them on the Ritz. Put the lions in the river. <laughs> and hopefully they float. Yeah, just see what happens. Yeah. It'll be a water show. It'll be a real circus. Yeah. But, of course, you know, most of the circus, like uh, Missoula, it, also another note is that Missoula, the city of Missoula banned all animal acts within the city. Oh. So there's no elephants. And that, uh, you know, like 
you know, th- which is good th- or bad. I don't know. Uh, but p- part of it was uh, the, one of the big circuses that came through town. Um, they would have elephant rides, and it, uh, they just thought it was, there was cruelty to animals, and they passed the ordinance to the city of Missoula, and the city of Missoula doesn't allow animal acts within the city of Missoula. And that ordinance passed a couple years back, much to the uh, Shriners. Um, okay, I don't want to get into it. That's a whole nother. That was, it's a whole, it was a huge, huge hot topic. It was such a back and forth. There's a lot yeah, of debate. Because the Shriners, they, they, they have a children's hospital. And the, the, a lot of the money that's uh, garnished through the circus helps, to, uh, helps the children. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Moving on. Uh, the urban fringe development area, UFTA, was uh, initiated in 2007. It, it was to envision the next uh, 15,000 new resident units which would be dealt in the Missoula urban service areas. Of course, you know, things a lot of times change because 2007 is when Missoula was in the growth. 2009 is when we had the uh, housing crisis. Tom Zavitz, uh, Development Services, and our Missoula talks about capacity um, in the city of Missoula. Um, the bigger question is, are there enough places for new development in Missoula right now, in the Missoula area right now? And what kinds of places are those? Are they the right places? And you're going to see a lot of numbers that are really big as as far as available capacity. But it's not all easy to get at. And how all right, so uh, Tom Zavitz goes in a little more detail, and also uh, the presen- presenter right next to him uh, is Garen Wally, and uh, he's with Development Services, and they talk about developing the north side, which also has to do with redevelopment. And tell me, uh, Josh, what is the difference between development and redevelopment? Well, when you develop something, it's uh, usually brand new, but if you redevelop it, then it's there, but you're like, you know, re renewing your development. So. Basically, and um, the whole idea of redevelopment is basically getting the land ready for development. Yeah. That the point of redevelopment is making it uh, accessible and also being able to provide amenities that would do all this stuff. And one of the big things that the city of Missoula is looking into is the north side because the north side was industrial for so long, but now it's turning to mixed residential commercial sites where they're building all these new properties off the Scott Street Bridge. And that's part of it is that they want to be able to um, deal with the uh, ever-growing Missoula population, which uh, is set to grow more than uh, 20,000 people in 10 years. And so far, they're working on trying to get all these units. Um, comparatively, so the whole the three terms that they really talked about in this particular meeting was uh, compatibility, capacity, and suitability are all the important things. And, you know, um, compatibility and capacity are very important, but suitability is another really important thing as well because you build houses, but then you don't have uh, access to uh, public trails. You don't have access to buses. You basically build a house, and a lot of times we're trying to encourage um, public transportation and low emissions and that kind of stuff in the city of Missoula, but how can we do that if the people who move into those houses can't do it? So, uh, Garen Wally, Development Service, talks about the areas would meet certain criteria in moving forward in terms of these lands. Lots, over 3,000 of them um, are at least minimally suitable. And I'll get to the in depth of that in a minute. Um, but just using these raw numbers, theoretically at current rates of development between 491 and 648 new dwelling units per year, uh, just a new perspective, that's about 15 to 20 years worth of development at current rates if we just used our vacant lots and uh, entitlements. But entitlements are not all platted and ready to go. I'll get into that in the next slide. All right, so of course, you know, I mean, just because, you know, because it's an industrial site, so a lot of the sites weren't necessary necessarily used for residential so they don't have amenity hookups, sewer, water, all that stuff because that was one of the biggest things that they uh, that they had to work on when they built all those new uh, houses and townhouses uh, up on the north side. So Scott Street, So, but of course so far the places that are locked up and particularly the north side has been redeveloped to match the needs of basic amenities. Um, parks, space, uh, grocery stores, heck even a cafe or restaurant would be nice on the north side but so far it's kind of like they have, a, they have a couple places but they're mostly right next to the highway, so they want to be able to have more of that kind of idea. But of course, 
The goal is to bring uh, that 70% to a 75% develop developmentable sites. They want it because they said in their uh, meeting it was they wanted a uh, three four quarters majority for redeveloping these sites for um, units. But of course, so far, 6,500 units will be developed based on the framework of the R Missoula growth policy moving forward. Here's uh, Jordan Hess reflecting the importance of housing. Different fulcrums here, and what are the um, where are the areas that we can apply pressure? What are the carrots? What are the sticks to, to shape the development how we want it? Right. Um, and I guess when we have development in areas that are objectively unsuitable, that comes at a cost to the community um, through providing infrastructure, through providing services. Um, and we've known that for a long time uh, with leapfrog uh, greenfield development and, and other types of unsuitable development. Um, so how do we shape everything in a way that, that creates um, a financially sustainable model for our community um, that develops um, density that is distributed um, equally or not necessarily equally but equitably throughout our community um, density that is that is uh, incremental and distributed I guess and and finally um, creating continuing to create a community that is livable and resilient um, all right and also they also kind of reflected a little bit more about you know like the more houses they build and more properties that they have um, in these high density places the better chance they'll be able to uh, have more bus lines to be able to provide transportation for those areas as well and that will end the land use and planning meeting um, during the Committee of the Whole, this is uh, a big meeting that they're talking about updating an ordinance to provide city with dockless bike system, which basically means you can um, use an app on your phone to check out a bike and you can go from one side of the town to another side of the town per ride and whatnot like this. But of course, I already talked about it last week. I don't need to go into too much detail about this as well. Uh, the biggest concern is that they don't want uh, these vehicles to go exceed an X amount of speed because anything lo that's further than like 15 miles per hour is could be considered like a motor vehicle. So they wanted to help clarify the policies and stuff like that. Not to mention, the um, city of Missoula has had a kind of a iffy um, pass when it comes to having bike sharing programs. Uh, Free Cycles did it for a while. They pretty much maybe only have like uh, five or maybe less than five bikes left from the bike share program because a lot of the bikes were either thrown in the river, stolen, never seen again. And now um, um, the uh, University of Montana, when I went there, maybe like many years ago, uh, they had a yellow bike which they would lend to their students to go around town. And that's pretty much in their sunset of their program as well. So there's just a lot of stuff going on with bike sharing. And a lot of them didn't really feel as though there was the right place. They're still trying to figure out how they want to move forward with this because they're inviting um, a private company to come in and basically get a, a bike sharing program or a electric scooter program and whatnot. You probably have seen electric scooters in popular media. So it, it, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? Would you would you ever ride those bikes that are provided, or like would you ever rent a bike? You know, it's kind of like Uber, but you just do a bike and you just get on the bike and you just go for the day. Yeah, you know, depending on like how much it would cost, um, probably. Like I have a bike, but right? I have also two flat tires on it. So um, yeah, you know, if I needed to get somewhere quickly, like here this morning, um, then I I would definitely. Um, you know, throw down on the app. And, the bike. and one of the things they wanted to do is they wanted to uh, have an electric motor in there, which would help people like get up hills. Yeah. And it's not supposed to be for kids for the most part. It's for transportation, especially for some older adults who may have trouble getting up the hills. Yeah, no, I think that's a good idea too. I um, saw those a lot in Seattle. They have like a few different services in Seattle that do that. And I, I didn't try one because I didn't have much time, but, like, I wanted to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the city of Missoula looked into the uh, dock system, which basically means have those special ports with a uh, 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 basically solar panels on top, and people would park their bikes for the season. But that would have cost, like, $1.2 million just to initiate, and not to mention, like, half a million dollars a year just in maintenance alone. So that's a dock system, which works really good for the big cities, but Missoula is so small, um, dockless systems it's have been getting more and more popular. It's a lot of money for yeah. a city our size to invest in. Pay up every year. Yeah. And, of course, you know, in this next se uh, topic I'm going to be talking about, um, um, admin and finance, th this is all the money that's going towards TIF funding for the Front Street Trust.
Triangle on Orange and Broadway. Uh, TIF funding has been a big issue, especially in terms of tax increment revenue or tax increment revenue bonds to pay, reimbursement or finance eligible costs, therefore, and making reimbursements of uh, declaration. This is a way for getting developers to do landscaping and other things and also give them a uh, refund for the money that they put into doing sidewalks and uh, basically sidewalk improvement projects. So Ellen Buchanan, MRA, talks about TIF funding for the Front Street Triangle in Orange and Broadway. So it's, it's the triangle that it's right next to the Fox site where they're developing the new Fox Hotel. So this is Ellen Buchanan. The bulk of the cost of the deconstruction really is our cost that would be required whether they were doing deconstruction or demolition. Um, they consist of remediation, which has to be done in either case. And the big one is the, the cost of shoring um, and restoring the site, but shoring to assure the integrity of the adjacent building, uh, Radio Central, and also the street edge and the alley edge on the other three sides of the building. All right, so Ellen Buchanan was talking about deconstruction, and deconstruction is a way to uh, uh, demolish buildings and recycle a lot of the material and salvage a lot of this space as well. It's a little more expensive, but in this particular case for this uh, riverfront triangle, they're working on um, basically, it's going to basically cost the same amount for demolition than it does cost to do, uh, demolish as well, especially during, um, since the build, some of the buildings are old enough where it may carry asbestos. So I think they did an asbestos test where they did find asbestos, so they're going to have to work hard to get that dealt with because regardless of demolition or deconstruction, it costs exactly the same. So it's at this point, it's pretty much a, it's a push. Uh, TIF for many people in Missoula has been a hard pill to swallow since the development costs incur the property for about 10, 20 years in urban renewal. In many ways, it's good for commercial entities, but awkward for residential ones. Andy Holleran, home based partners, the one who worked with the Mercantile Project in demolishing the old Mercantile to build that hotel, is now looking to deconstruct the Firestone building also compares uh, Missoula to Bozeman in terms of projects and progress. So he's from Bozeman, but he's really uh, happy about how Missoula is working with him and his home base company. When you look at Missoula, you see things like Rome, you see the new library, you see um, Stockman Bank, you see Radius Gallery, you see Conflex, you see new businesses coming in. It's very vibrant and very exciting. Um, in Bozeman, it's it's a fraction of that activity in our downtown. And I think it's largely because we don't have the framework in place that, that the city of Missoula does. And so for a stakeholder, what we have is predictability. I'm not saying it's easy. You know, we can look at things like the Fox Triangle site. What we do is tough. Um, but I'm here to say that with the adoption of the plan, Design Excellence, the TIF program, it uh, it's really good. And uh, All right, so uh, that was Andy Holler and talking a little about more of the TIF, pro TIF program. Um, there's a lot of people in Missoula and many projects that are being paid through the TIF assistance. Ellen goes in to talk about the projects that come through. The more money is generated through these TIF uh, funds as well. And you might recall when we were creating the Front Street District, Riverfront Triangle District, we were very intentional about to steal the mayor's word of the month. We were very intentional about making sure that the major intersections with the state routes were in an urban renewal district so that we would have some funding source that we control and not be totally at the mercy of, of federal or state MDT transportation funds. All right, so that was Alan Buchanan talking about how Missoula is taking um, initiative to move forward with funding through TIF funding to work on this as well. And uh, Brian Von Lossberg, uh, he reflects the concerns of folks who have for TIFs and their developers, and he uh, tells a little tale. I don't think it's any surprise there is this tension in the community around what we do with MRA funds and this idea that um, and it, it comes everywhere from email to me sitting <laughs> at the sidewalk uh, at the restaurant the other night and a constituent coming up and saying, 
you got to, I want you to stop um, bringing in hotels and bringing um, and giving them tax breaks. And I said, well, there's this thing about private property. We're not bringing in hotels. This is a decision from an investor to, to make an investment in this here. It's permitted by zoning. It's part of planning downtown. So we kind of cover that topic. And then, you know, we don't give tax breaks. There's no property tax break on this. There's a confusion around tax increment financing. So theoretically, to draw this out, I think part of the issue, frankly, and we've been kind of hitting on this for a while, is the way we talk about these projects. And I'm going to continue to push us to talk about these in what I hope is, and I think is a more accurate way. So theoretically, if the World Institute of Bunny Rabbits and Panda Bears decided to build its world headquarters at 139 East Main Street, um, would we not be facing the same issues with remediation, deconstruction, right-of-way improvements, and utility relocations? Absolutely. So I think, there, I think that's important to emphasize to the public, and I think it's important for us to continue to evolve the way we talk about these projects. I'm not so, I'm actually fairly convinced that we probably should be talking about investments like this as investments in public infrastructure at 139 East, I'm sorry, 175, you know, Patty Street, as opposed to um, the AC by Marriott Hotel. And it's nothing critical of Andy's project. It's just that it fuels a fire that um, we are providing gap funding to close, you know, a gap to make this pencil out for the developer, which is absolutely not the case. It's just All right, so that was uh, Brian von Lotsberg uh, explaining TIFFs again. All right, so that's pretty much all you, uh, th all that's going on with uh, information about your city council committee meetings. If you want more information about the city of Missoula, you can go onto the city's website, sia.missoula.mt.us. You can watch these meetings and more. You go to government agendas webcast minutes you click on here you basically go it brings you to this page and you can see uh minutes mp3s mp4s of the meetings as well so you can have access to this in your browser being able to watch those meetings and more if you're interested in finding out more about wake up missoula you can go to my website wake up missoula.wixsite.com slash wake up missoula so nice we made you write it out twice you can go to mcat.org to find more information make sure to like mcat on facebook this saturday is our last Saturday drop-in animation day. So you, if you have a kid that's age um, 9 to 13 who loves stop animation, who likes Legos, who likes to make cool movies out of nothing, inanimate objects, and make them move, it's the perfect place for them. And it's the last day to do it because we're gearing up and we're switching gears to our summer camp program. So this Saturday will be the last one. It's $10 per kid, $15 for siblings. And if your kid just wants to have a half day and just kind of experience what it's all about, they can pay $5 for a half day. So pretty good deal. If I say so, it's four hours, one to 5 PM. Nice Saturday afternoon, fun time, especially during the Horrible, horrible rainstorms that we're going to be incurring this weekend as well. All right, I got an art clip for you guys, and this is from the Clay Studio of Missoula. This will be going on until the end of this month, so when we come back, I'll have a little bit of time to talk about uh, events, so stay with me.
right, welcome back, guys. Let's talk a little bit about events. We have about five minutes left in the show, so let's talk about Bike to Work Day. Uh, May is Bike Month, and part of uh, this is uh, pedalmissoula.org uh, to view the full calendar and all the events that are happening, on, and today is Bike to Work Day. Uh, find fueling stations during the morning in various locations around Missoula, and of course you can go to the, my, uh, to the map at Bike to Work Day fueling stations, and you know they provide coffee, snacks, and breakfast. Speaking of breakfast, they have Breakfast on the Bridges, again, happening this morning and the next two mornings, uh, May 17th, 24th, and 31st. This one is happening on the Milwaukee Trail and Orange Street Bridge. Next one is going to be at Scott Street Bridge next Friday. And then um, the last one is going to be at Madison Street Bridge. So this is uh, for more events you can find out at pedalmissoula.org. Tiny Tales and Story Time, Missoula Public Library at 10.30 a.m. Your kids can learn to read and stuff. A hands-on science robotics and circuits. Uh, they code our Ozobots and build your own little bit circuits at the Discovery Bench. So it's really cool. The whole idea is that you draw a line, and a lot of these robots follow the lines very well. So that's really cool. Uh, Cribbage and Bridge, Missoula Senior Center. Destroy some old people at Cribbage and or Bridge. Uh, wa watercolor travel kit cases. Missoula Public Library, come learn to make your upcycle travel watercolor kit during this class. Um, it's starting at 3 p.m. this afternoon, and you can uh, water watercolor brush meets in the large meeting room space. is limited to 12 participants, and it happens from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And speaking of afternoon, um, it's Teen Riders Group. They happen every single Friday after school. It's 3.30 to 5 p.m. You meet in this, uh, the public library uh, small meeting room where you just got to discuss your writing, improve your writing skills, and just talk about your stories and whatnot. And um, Nerf on Turf. Um, if you like uh, shooting people with Nerf guns, Nerf on Turf is the place to be for Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. Mask Studio is doing a dance and visual performance by Arts and Above, and it's called The Things, and it's going to be at Mask Studio. Will they be performing starting at 8 p.m. and it's 50-minute contemporary dance production. Saturday, markets from 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m. I have about two minutes left, so let's uh, get through this. Roots Excel Gymnax Yard Sale. So your Roots Acro Sports Center is doing a yard sale starting at 8 a.m. at their location. Homeward's final f financial fitness class is happening at 9 a.m. at Homeward. And they're going to be doing this uh, May 18th and also June 11th, 12th, and 13th for their nine, 6 to 9 session. But they have an all-day session starting tomorrow. Uh, Saturday, Family Art Workshop. Missoula Art Museum is doing a free family workshop for your family starting at 11 a.m. Animal Wonders will be at Travelers Rest State Park. So Animal Wonders brings a lot of rescued animals that are from all around the world for you to enjoy and learn about to help protect their natural habitat as many animals are going extinct. Uh, Saturday open hours at the Moon Randolph Homestead. Every Saturday they're doing open hours at the Moon Randolph Homestead where you get t guided tours through one of the oldest homesteads that are still around today. Historic Masonry Tours start at 1 p.m. Historic Preservation Month. Uh, Jim Sears, you and Professor of Geosciences, uh, Jim McDonald, Preservation Architect, will be basically going hidden Missoula, uh, historic Missou Missoula buildings, and they'll talk to you all about it and meet at the fish statue adjacent to Karis Park starting at 1 p.m. I wanted to get them on the show to do an interview, but I didn't call, get a call back, so you guys can check it out. Go to Karis Park at 1 p.m. to find out more history about masonry in downtown Missoula's old buildings. Um, and that's pretty much it for what's going on this weekend. Um, they have a uh, bike ride that's happening uh, tomorrow night at Silver Park. It's a full moon bike ride, but it might be raining, so they might have to cancel it. But so, yeah, there's just a lot of rain happening this weekend. Um, but you have a lot of stuff to enjoy uh, by watching the show and more this weekend. Um, there's a lot of programs on MCAT you can watch. So without further ado, I want to thank you for joining me, and I want to thank Josh for joining me this morning. So Josh, play us out. Um, we only have about a minute left, so take it away.